Goldfarb and thank you very much for joining me here today. Today I'm going to be talking about epigenetics and how it can lead to health or disease depending on our lifestyle choices. It was previously thought that whatever lifestyle choices we make during our lives will affect only our personal health and our longevity and not affect our future generations. We were sure that when we had offsprings, their genetic slate would be wiped clean of all of our non-beneficial lifestyle choices and that we have no real responsibility towards the health of our future generations through our own personal dietary and lifestyle habits. However, now we know that this is not the case. The term epigenetics was coined in 1942 by Conrad Waddington, who fused the words epi, which means above, and genetics together to describe events that could not be explained by then known genetic principles. Later in the uh, 1980s, Robin Holiday's work on cellular memory and the effects of gene expression on DNA prompted her to redefine epigenetics as the study of the changes in gene expression which occur in organisms and the inheritance of given patterns of gene expression. Basically, epigenetics states that the code of life is interactive and your DNA is not your, de your destiny because gene expression is due to lifestyle habits and gene expression responds to the environment of your cells. So unlike our DNA sequence, which is mostly stable throughout our lives, the epigenome can be uh, dynamically altered by environmental conditions. And the epigenome doesn't change the DNA, but it does determine how much and which genes are expressed. And this has a significant impact on every aspect of our being. People who make better dietary choices and lifestyle choices will activate health promoting genes and cause disease promoting genes to become dormant. Cancer, Alzheimer's and diabetes are diseases which are very much rooted in genetics and much research is now being focused on how our lifestyle choices could lead to epigenetic changes that may allow us to avoid conditions that we may have been genetically predisposed to. So actually what we eat, how we exercise, or even how we manage stress and how much we sleep could promote health promoting epigenetic changes. Some epigenetic factors have been found to be hereditary and passed on to our children and this was proven in the year 2000 by a group of Swedish scientists led by Dr. Lars Olaf Bigren, a preventative health specialist at the Karolinska Institute in Sweden and the results from his study were absolutely outstanding. The study showed that children who enjoyed excess food during certain periods of their childhood and went from healthy, uh, normal amounts of food to gluttony actually produced offspring and grandchildren who lived much shorter lives. And once uh, Bigren and his team of scientists actually uh, took the socio-economic variations and added them into the results, they found that the difference in longevity was actually 32 years, a decreased lifespan for these uh, people and their offspring and their offspring's offspring. So not only can we ruin our own health by our faulty lifestyle choices, it's becoming clear that those same bad choices can predispose our future generations even before conception, to disease and early death. So if you choose to smoke heavily or make poor dietary choices or live a very sedentary lifestyle, you will promote epigenetic tags on your DNA that will not only affect your personal health, but it will also affect generations after you. It is thought that the autoimmune disorders previously unheard of and the diabetes and obesity um, epidemics of today are due to epigenetic changes that come from our grandparents and perhaps even their previous ancestors' lifestyle choices. Another study showed that phytoestrogen genistein uh, found in fava beans, soya beans, and chickpeas, and other legumes as well, modified the fetal epigenome and protected from becoming obese. Another group of nutrients includes the B vitamins that counteract the detrimental effects induced by environmental toxins like bisphenol A that comes from plastics, 
by positively influencing our, G our epigenome. Now we know that most of the population has um, bisphenol A in their body and through the plastic use. So the, the negative effects of this toxin could be eliminated through uh, proper food choices. Now to ensure our personal health and prevent disease promoting gene expression that may increase the tendency for these diseases, I suggest that you consume these 17 foods on a regular basis. And the 17 foods include collard greens, turnip greens, broccoli, uh, beets, uh, Swiss, Swiss chard, romaine lettuce, bok choy, cauliflower, asparagus, quinoa, spinach, uh, parsley, lentils of all types, uh, pinto beans, chickpeas, um, black beans, and navy beans. These are foods that are very rich in methyl donors that actually promote health uh, uh, promoting genes from being, for being expressed. So we as parents actually have a genetic responsibility towards our children. We must guard our genes through proper life enhancing food choices that we can pass on to our future generations, healthy genes that promote longevity. Our choices today have massive implications by changing your dietary and lifestyle habits today, making sure you get enough sleep, lower the amount of caffeine you consume, consume these 17 foods that I just mentioned, um, sleep properly and practice meditation all of these will affect your personal health making you have a much better life for you personally and for your family and also for the your future generations and the human race at large so thank you very much for joining me today i hope this has helped you make better uh, lifestyle choices if you like the content give it a thumbs up if you're more interested in more information please visit my blog at www.thegorilladiet.com or subscribe to my channel to get weekly new updates on more and more information in the health field. Thank you very much.